Wednesday, October 17th, 2018, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. I'd like to thank all the viewers who communicate with me, sent me uh, material about economics, banking, um, the financial system. It's really helpful. I try to look at, at all of them as much as possible. Uh, the reason uh, I'm saying this is because I, I got a really interesting link to a video uh, and it's uh, by Professor Werner and it's, and it's entitled uh, Professor Werner it brilliantly explains how the banking system and financial sector really work. I'll put a link to it uh, below uh, in the description. I'll put it up in the cards. But uh, apart from the video, I had a, a further look into this professor and he said some very interesting things uh, that I agree with him a lot. Uh, our views are not the same, but uh, I think it's important to have an open mind in all things and uh, yeah, to uh, debate things. But one thing that we agree completely on is on central banking, is that it's a scourge uh, and uh, that their end goal uh, is for total control total uh, destruction of smaller banks so they can you know control things from the center you know control uh, things from just one big bank and uh, that's what I want to talk about today and uh, I'll give some of the examples he gives uh, about uh, banking uh, in Germany especially uh, how banking is um, some of you probably think it's just Deutsche Bank but uh, no there, there are um, there's much more to just Deutsche Bank in Germany. Uh, I've uh, actually sent him an email uh, because I read one of his uh, articles last night, uh, which was in, is entitled Shifting from Central Planning to a Decentralized Economy. Do we need central banks? Uh, so very interesting uh, material. Some of it doesn't uh, equate to my views on free markets. Uh, but I'm open to uh, suggestions to new ideas. Um, so before that, of course, I'm going to look at what the markets are doing this morning. It's uh, 8.44 a.m. London. Yesterday uh, was a big day for the stock market uh, in the U.S. So uh, the Dow was up uh, 547 points or 2.17%. Uh, closed at 25,798. Uh, and I, I, I get a, you know, I still think that uh, we are consolidating. Uh, I think it, we're forming a flag. Maybe it's not a flag. Maybe we're going to go uh, higher without a flag. But I don't think we're going to beat the all time high again. We might match it, but we're very close to turning uh, back around. I think. Uh, the double top we've made in the Dow uh, from you know the beginning of the year to most recently is uh, technically it looks really bad in my opinion. It's really damaged the technical picture. Uh, some of you have contacted me saying, "Oh, the the Dow has made a bottom. It's going to go to new highs," and uh, but I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Uh, so yeah, yesterday was a big day for the Dow. Uh, gold uh, stayed fairly firm most of the day and then uh, came back down as the Dow continued to get goosed up. Uh, <laughs> and so where are we this morning? Well, spot gold is uh, down a little further. It's at 12.2250, down two and a half uh, dollars. Uh, the range has been 12.2050 to 12.26. Uh, so down 0.2 of a percent spot gold, uh, silver 1461 down five cents or a third of a percent range has been 1459 to 1470 uh, silver. Uh, the Dow is up eight points, so uh, not uh, much move here. 25797 uh, the futures. S and P is up uh, nine points or a third of a percent. 2817. And uh, NASDAQ uh, 100 futures up uh, almost 1% or 65 points. So interestingly, uh, the Dow is not moving much, but the other indices are continuing higher. Uh, the uh, currencies, the pound is down a uh, uh, 0.2 of a percent at 131.58 or down 25 pips. 
Uh, the euro is at uh, 115.56, down 17 or 0.15%. And the dollar is unchanged against the yen, 112.29. A dollar uh, you won six ninety one eighty so up uh, marginally uh, the oil markets uh, WTI is at seventy two so up a third of a percent and uh, Brent is at eighty one forty up uh, also uh, about a third well, what about the bond markets uh, let's have a look uh, the ten year yield. Is at 316 so it's been fairly steady the bond market still fairly elevated uh, rates uh, the Italian 10-year is actually dropping here it's at 340 it's down about six so things seem to be okay for now in the financial markets um, we'll have to see what happens in the next few days the other point I wanted to make I saw this headline as well uh, which to me, it didn't make sense, and I guess James Turk of Gold Money caught on to it, uh, and he tweeted, mainstream media dutifully reported today, and I quote, a budget, U.S. budget deficit ended the budget deficit ended the fiscal year at 779 billion. But here's what really happened, <laughs> he says, federal government debt rose by 1.27 trillion or 492 billion more than the deficit. How is that possible? I agree with him. Phony accounting. Yet, yeah, how can uh, the debt rise by 1.27 trillion uh, and the deficit only be 779 billion? Where do they get the other 492 billion from? That just seems uh, pretty amazing to me. So that's how they, uh, yeah, phony accounting. So I, I agree with James Turk there. And uh, I'm glad he uh, pointed that out. So uh, central banking professor Richard Werner. Uh, so yeah, I, I tweeted out this video in which he explains how the banking system and financial sector really work. I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to go more into the fact that uh, he uh, talks about how central, the end game of central banking is really to destroy the smaller banks, consolidate power, uh, you know, and uh, really make, you know, bring in uh, basically a, this new world order of the international bankers uh, to, uh, so they can see, you know, also the cashless society, he talks about how the, the point of it might be, uh, you know, is to uh, have negative interest rates, uh, but uh, the point of negative interest rates really is to kill smaller banks. Uh, and uh, even though they, they say that uh, negative interest rates is to encourage spending, but we, we've seen that uh, people, you know, countries like Switzerland and in, in the EU where you neg have negative interest rates in Japan, is there spending? No, if they really wanted people to spend, they should be able to uh, let them take their cash out and spend it, not to negative interest rates. So... He believes, for for example, one thing about Germany, the German uh, banking system that I didn't know, 70% uh, of the deposits uh, of the German banking system is controlled by the uh, local community banks called Raiffeisen uh, banks. Uh, and uh, they're like co-op co banks and they've been around for 200 years and there's 1,500 of them I didn't realize. Uh, so yes... Uh, the big banks like Deutsche Bank uh, and other bigger banks, they only control 12% of the deposits. And his view is that they're trying to kill off all these smaller banks in Germany. And that's why the ECB is keeping rates so low and only helping uh, the big uh, German banks uh, like the Deutsche Bank, Postbank, which is owned by Deutsche Bank, Unit Credit Bank, which is uh, high used to be Hyperfereins Bank, Commerce Bank, and Dresdner Bank. So that's who the ECB is trying to help. But, uh, I, and, and you know, when he told, said that, uh, or actually he didn't say it, I was reading his article, that there's like about 1,500 of these local banks in Germany. I, I was like really shocked. But, uh, and I, I went on, on Wikipedia and I found these banks. They're folks banks and Raiffeisen banks. Uh, and he, you know, I, you can see the list here is huge, the amount of banks there are in Germany. So 
everywhere, all the local banks. And is it any wonder that the German economy has done so well? Uh, you know, that uh, smaller uh, companies uh, and family run businesses do so well. He talks about how these, um, they're not, not for profit, these banks, which is amazing. They're just like providing a banking service uh, to these small communities. And that's why the German uh, economic miracle happened. That's why the Mittelstand, which are the German uh, mom and pop business or smaller business do so well, because uh, you know they're serviced locally by these banks. And, and his view is that uh, the central banks uh, now with their policy of zero interest rates, negative interest rates, and quantitative easing is to bring down a lot of these smaller banks so they can consolidate power and they can be in control, uh, basically bring on fascism. And it's ironic because when you read about Professor Werner, he, he taught in, in Japan and he wrote a, an article about quantitative easing uh, in 1995. Uh, he was one of the, uh, he advanced the concept of it, but not for the banks. He advanced quantitative easing uh, uh, for what he calls credit guidance so that uh, all these smaller banks, you know, the, can give uh, credit to smaller businesses because he, he points out that if you give credit to productive businesses uh, that create value uh, and wealth, you don't have inflation because they're going to produce goods. Uh, and that's how you control the inflation. Uh, but when you give uh, credit just for consumption and also what he calls uh, for the exchange of assets, which is what the, you know, the city of London does uh, and the UK, uh, he talks about how, you know, in the UK, five banks control 90% of the deposits and their main, you know, all the, you know, the main business they do over 70% is for speculation, for a transfer uh, of uh, you know ownership. What does that mean? Well, they create money or credit not to help uh, small businesses all around the UK, but to help uh, people buy and sell assets to speculate. And that's why the UK economy uh, is so, there's so much inequality in the UK compared to places like Germany. Uh, the other point he makes is about bubbles, and he talks about how Japan, prior to uh, late, you know, mid to late 80s, was an economic miracle as well. And they had a very similar banking uh, system to Germany, where the credit went to uh, all different kinds of industries, and not solely for consumption, but, you know, the... Uh, Washington uh, establishment, the IMF, World Bank, uh, Federal Reserve Bank of England didn't like that. So they forced Japan into creating a bubble, which they did by uh, basically uh, put, doing, pumping this credit into speculation. And that's why in the late 80s, uh, all the land in the Japanese, in, in the Imperial Palace in Tokyo was valued more than all the land in California. So that's how crazy Japan uh, got. Uh, and why do they do that? Well, because they wanted to destroy the Japanese model, which he calls a, a wartime uh, economy, but for uh, consumption. You know, it was basically, and that's why Japan works so well, the economy there. Um, and so the only way they could uh, convince the general public, uh, businesses, uh, politicians to change that was through a, an enormous, enormous crisis, which you had in Japan in the Japanese uh, bubble was huge in the late 80s, uh, early, you know, well, it burst in 1989. And when he said that, I, I thought, well, that's what they're doing now in the United States. It's a huge bubble. Uh, I mean, you look at the stock market, the charts, and, and, and what is the end game? Well, is to consolidate even more power within the Federal Reserve. It's the, the mother of all bubbles. Um, the, and at the, same, at the time as well, talks about uh, how in Japan, 
uh, not only in Japan, but abroad. People were reading everything about Japan, uh, you know, management books. They're reading about samurais in the 17th century. They thought Japan was great, but it had nothing to do with management, the bubble and all those prices going up. It was just uh, an injection of credit in order to create a bubble. Uh, I recommend, uh, he did, there is a documentary, he, there's a book and it, as well that he wrote, it's called Princes of the Yen. Uh, Google that on YouTube. I started watching it, it's quite long, I haven't finished it. And it's funny because I had watched that years ago, but I'd forgotten about it. So that, that's how it goes. Uh, so that's the end game, complete centralization of the system. Uh, by the central banks and that's why they create the bubbles um, and that's why they also burst uh, the bubbles um, which they did in Japan they turned at one point they, they just turned the tap off and that's what uh, Mr. Powell was doing at the Federal Reserve uh, if you enjoyed this video please like share it subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet uh, you can also follow me on Steemit, DTube and on Twitter uh, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.